Hey there, welcome back. We are cloning Pop the Log game. And last time we have used scriptable objects to create our own event system. And today we are gonna add some shared state in the game. Now, if you're working on any kind of game, you'll probably have some shared state. And the most common pattern to implement a shared state is to just use C-sharp singletons. But let's explore one more use case of scriptable objects and that is to use them as simple data containers. So let's create a new class called game data and this will be a scriptable object and I'm just going to put in some common variables like current level, unlocked levels and maybe dot remaining. I'm thinking we need to have some kind of public method that can reset the level. Uh, so this will reset the dots remaining to the current level when we call it. And I'll also stick the create asset menu attribute on this so we can create assets. Let's also make a manager game object with a game manager component. And this object will hold a reference to the game data. Let's keep our files together and also create a new game data asset. Let's say default and drop it in the game manager object. So the game manager will be responsible for checking the remaining dots. So I'll create a method for that. And if the dots are zero, then we do something. And in here we can raise an on win event. And I'm just gonna define the game event variable above. And I think when the game loads, we need to reset the level so we can stick that in the start. Now that we have the common game data, we can start to use that to update the UI text as well. So on our level text, we'll add a new component called level text UI. And here I'll keep a reference to the game data and also a reference to the text mesh pro component attached to this game object. I'll cache the text mesh pro in the start and maybe set the initial text to something like level plus the current level from the game data. And in the update, we can just keep the text up to date with the game data and that's it. Uh, we would also need to have a variable to count the stars the player has. So let's add a new variable in game data. And now on the stars UI, I'll add a similar component as level text UI that just sets the text to the stars count. And drop this game data asset on the component and hit play. And there's an error here, which I think is because we need the text mesh pro UI component, not the normal one. And I'll replace that. Now the UI is being updated as we update our game data asset. Uh, also, this needs to be star, not current level. And it works fine. I think we should do the same for the center remaining dots text as well. So rather than having the score updater component, which we just made for demoing the event system, we can add a new component called remaining dots text UI. And we'll again get the text component and update its text to the game data's dot remaining count. And also drop the game data in the inspector. I'm also thinking we should have the game manager handle the reducing of dots in the game data. So I can create something like decrement remaining dots and that will reduce the data value and just make sure it doesn't go in negative as well. And the on win event is missing. So I'll just drag it in the game manager. Okay, now that we have the public method to reduce the dots, we can add an event listener that listens for the dot score. And when the event is raised, we'll just call the decrement remaining dots method. Uh, let's test it. Uh, there's this null reference error on event. I think we forgot to drop the event. So let's drop that on variables. Now, when we score the dot and if there is no dots left, the win sequence starts. Of course, it's a bit wonky right now as it keeps on looping. So we'll fix that soon. But also notice that the paddle doesn't reset its position when the level is cleared. So let's go to our paddle and maybe add an event listener again and listen for the win event. And then we would like to call some public method to set the paddle back to the original position. Uh, but we don't have that kind of method yet. So let's write that. And I'm not sure how to do this at this point. So let's try out a few things. And maybe let's have a vector three initial position variable. And in the start, we'll save our transforms position in it. 
and then we can have a public method called reset position that just sets the transform back to the initial position and now we can choose this as a response in our listener but as you can see this is not correct the paddle is going all crazy at one position i think the local positioning might be the issue so let's try the local position here instead and also set is running to false okay so now the paddle doesn't rotate but the rotation seems to be messed up okay what if we only change the x and y position and not the z value still not working maybe save the whole transform instead of just position Oh, I see. Maybe we need the local position and in reset, we don't change the X position or Z. We only change the Y value and also set the local rotation to identity. Yeah, now the paddle resets. Uh, let's also fix this looping issue. I guess we don't need to check for the remaining dots every single update method. So we could just raise the win event directly if the remaining dots are zero. And then we don't need this check remaining dot method either. And as you can see that the looping issue has been fixed now. There's also this bug in the paddle that it doesn't stop when the level is cleared. So let's make a new public method called stop. And here we set the is running to false. Now we can use this method instead of reset position. And when we play, you can see that the paddle stops when the level clears. So the paddle is stopping, that's all good. But of course we also need it to reset back to the start. And the way I think I'll do this is to go back to my main log objects animation and select the win animation. And let's go to the end keyframe. And somewhere around here, we'll add a new animation event. And using this, we'll raise our own game event. But the Unity animation event can only call public methods on objects. And we currently don't have any such public method that can raise an event. So let's create a new component called event invoker. And this component just raises a given game event when we call the public method. I actually want to raise a new game load event here so I can do various stuff in the game. To be honest, I'm not sure about this approach, but let's see what happens. I'll also create a new game event called load game event and drop this here. Now I'll go back to the animation event and choose this method. Now in the paddle, we can listen for this game load event using our listener. And when it happens, we'll just reset the position. You might be thinking all of this seems too redundant, but I'm trying to decouple my objects as much as possible. I don't want to reference other objects just because I want to reset my position. Let's also listen for this event in the game manager. I'll add a new listener and drop this load game event. And here I would like to load the new level, but we don't have any method yet. So let's create the new method called load next level. And inside this, I'll increment the current level in the game data and also reset the level. I can now choose this method in the listener. And this works fine. When the level clears, the paddle resets to the start position and the current level is also incremented. One more bug I can see is that the paddle should stop when we miss a dot, but it doesn't. The fix is quite easy. In the paddle, I'll add a new event listener for the lose event and then drag the same object and choose stop method. Now the paddle stops on dot miss. But you'll also notice that we can still keep tapping and get repeated lose events. Ideally, once we miss a dot, we would like the game to just stop completely and any dot detection as well. So the solution for this is that here in my dot detector, you can see that I have a is running boolean and the same thing in the anchored motor. And this is duplicated and I think it should be moved to a common game data. So I'll go back to my game data class and add a new boolean called is running. And also in the reset level, I'll just set the is running to false. Now back in the anchored motor, we can have a reference to the game data class. And then instead of using this local is running variable, we can use the game data is running variable. I actually don't feel good about updating this variable from anchored motor. But for now, it's fine. I might refactor this later. And I'll do the same thing in dot detector, add a variable for game data and then replace all local is running checks with game data is running. Drop the game data on the variable field and hit play. 
I can still notice the same issue. Even when we are in the lose state, I can continue to tap and get more lose events. Hmm, let's see. I don't need this anymore and maybe updating this boolean here is not a good idea. So this can be simplified and have both checks here. And the same simplification in the dot detector. Now if we test, we can see that if I turn is running on, the paddle starts moving and if I lose, it stops. So no more extra lose events. As for updating this is variable, uh, what if we go to the game manager class and inside update, we'll do a check for the mouse down. And if the game is not running, we'll just set it to running. And we can tap to start, but we can't really stop. So still not fixed. By the way, I also noticed that on the paddle object, we are listening for lose event and stopping the paddle. And this should be moved to the game manager, I think. So I'll remove it from here and go to the game manager and add the same listener there. And I'll create a new method called stop game. And this just sets the is running to false. And now I can choose this method. Okay, this is done, but the game still doesn't stop on error. And that I think is probably because of this. Because we are doing this check every frame, so when we lose, we are essentially holding the mouse button down. So it again starts the game back up. So to fix this, we can add an extra boolean variable called is first tap. And we only allow this if it's true. And let's define it here. And also set it to false down below. Now our game stops on dot missed. Okay, let's take a break here. And next week, we'll add some more features to this. And if you like these videos, please consider subscribing. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.